Good afternoon from Barcelona. I feel most honored to participate in this annual meeting. Special thanks to the brave ones who attend an online session after lunch. Books, materials and decoration might differ, but the essential remains, a binding, a structure that collects and enables to flip the folios. Book repair often arises the dilemma of how faithful should we stick to the original binding structure. Most of the time, it's a matter of decayed supports, hence it is quite feasible to reproduce it. Here, the broken thongs have been replaced after conservation. However, it is already complex under this premise because aesthetics and historical aspects might condition the treatment. But what happens if the original structure is already failing? No matter how much we fix the supports, it shall collapse. There is a large variety of structures, all of them based on pasted and soon attachments. Keeping this duality in mind simplifies decision making a lot. According to my experience, unions that require movement endure more when they are soon, whereas those static ones are stronger when pasted. For instance, a sewing ties the text block into the cover through the thongs, allowing a flexible and enduring bond. But the attachment of the board paper onto the cover is adhesion. And precisely, the tipped tone and paper is torn alongside the spine fold, as you can see, whereas the thongs remain tight. Good. So today we'll see several examples of this concept grouped in three types. Disproportioned books, books without sewing, and the use of grain direction as structure provider. So first category. Proportionality does not refer to unusual measures, but rather to the capacity of a structure to endure be handled and protect their contents. For instance, this proportion here lies in the fact that the spine of the text block is twice as wide as the parchment spine. Yes, the binding remains linked to it, but one third of the folios are unprotected. If we uncur uncurl the text block, and fix the binding, it shall never fit in. So it's an endurable but failing structure. And not so obvious, but far much common, the case of really heavy books. This one has a recessed cord sewing, whose cords were already weakened during the binding process. In order to prevent bulk in the joint and paste down, the slips were frayed, thus losing strength. And some time after, the frayed cords gave in. And in short, we'll see how these books were restored. Disproportioned bindings can also be really small, as long as the attachment board's text block is too weak to sustain it, or as in this case, the edges much too high. When placed vertically, the text, block, the text block falls and the binding collapses. And here's the book restored, and I'll soon explain how it's done. And a very interesting example. This is an original spine lining adhered as it arrived at the studio or detached. A thick cloth, loads of glue, and the most reliable 
sewing on tapes. And yet, only the pasted components have failed. Is it because the book is too heavy? Or maybe it's because where there's motion, adhesion should have been discouraged. It is as simple as sewing some random stitches on a mall, a gauze or a remake through some of the gatherings. And here are the random stitches. The mull is later on inserted into the covers, slotting the boards in advance. Here's the mull, soon onto the text block, slotting the boards, inserting the mull, and sealing it with paste and pressure. That's exactly what was done to the second example of a really heavy book. This structural reinforcement guarantees a strong, flexible and enduring bond, no matter how heavy the book is. After conservation, the book holds itself vertically. I know it's not recommended to do so, to do so but uh, there's no trick in the photograph. The book holds itself for its own. Good. So let's focus now on the second category, books that lack, lack sewing, mainly albums. Their contents are inserted after binding the book, which needs to be flexible to endure handling and accommodate the photographs. Yet, the folios are simply adhered to each other through guarded stops. But adhesion does not ensure a flexible structure. In the long run, either the stops tear apart or detach from each other. And this no matter which support is used. For in this other case, the stops were made of paper and fabric strips and they are even much more torn. So rather than stiffening by adding more glued layers, it's more efficient to sew it, more flexible, more light and invisible. So here's before and after, and the before structure was based mainly on adhesion, whereas the after falls to sewing. So after, before. Good, so we're in the third and last category, which is grain direction. And many of you might be wondering what to do when there's no chance to sew. So I do as I have learned by observing all bindings. In many of them, the grain direction of tipped on supports is used on purpose as a provider of structure, such as in this incunabula, in which the board papers have horizontal grain direction as opposite to the book leaves. This involves a nightmare of creases. So, What's the explanation for experienced bookbinders doing that? A careless and shabby work? A possible reason to assume this imperfection could be that tears along the joint are less likely to happen when in opposite grain direction. Therefore, the paste down becomes not only a covering material, but a support providing significant structural attachment. Uh -huh. I have mostly seen it on 15th to 17th century books, but I eagerly encourage further research on this regard. In my opinion, it's an evolution of former structures of joint uh, reinforcements, but I haven't gone much further. Be that as it may, a board paper with vertical grain direction 
does not prevent tears to expand all along the spine fold. So that's what I take advantage of for soon unsupported bindings whose damages are well known. I use horizontal grain direction for adhered attachments. Besides, the tight back is converted to a hollow back, providing more flexibility to the wrapper, and the sewing is also reinforced. First of all, the wrapper needs to be detached. Then, a remake is soon to the text block with a secondary sewing. And here's the sewing. After that, two pieces of hot melt tissue, as big as the covers, are placed underneath the remake, overlapping each other. So in blue, the remake, and now white and now yellow, one of the two pieces of the hot melt tissue under the remake, and another one is missing. The grain direction of the tissue must be horizontal. Then the overlap tissue stubs are adhered to the remake, but not the text block by heating. So the text block, uh, the spine of the text block lacks adhesive layers. The rest of the surface is then attached onto the restore wrapper by remoistening the adhesive with ethanol. And the reason of avoiding water is to prevent distortion of the tissue, which has opposite grain direction. As a result, the text block is soon onto the remake. The remake collects the tissue attached to the wrapper and the tissue, which has opposite grain direction, provides a good reinforcement at the joint of the wrapper. And in yellow, I'm showing you the adhered surfaces. But the wrapper lacks any adhesion on the spine area, the one that requires motion. So the structure is quite visible both from inside and outside. Here's uh, before and after conservation. You don't see anything from the outside. There are, of course, endless variations of these ideas that cannot be explained here, and each of them applies to a particular case and feature of, of the book, whether they are thicker or smaller, uh, printed uh, inside or not. But that's roughly the idea. We've completely altered the structure, keeping it light and not very visible, but much more endurable. After conservation, safe handling is possible. So these were the main concepts I wanted to share with all these examples. So remember, unions on movable areas are better sewn. Green direction can provide structure to adhered attachments. And flexible areas should remain light. Thank you all for your attention. I'm happy to reply any questions you might have, but I'd like to acknowledge first the owners of these books as well, here the owners, as well as all the conservators who have worked on them that are here below all mentioned. Thea, Paula, Claudia, Laura, Sehi, and Anna. Thank you all.